paddle tail swim bait is one of the best lures you can throw and it can be effective all year round. The paddle tail is so effective because of how well it mimics a wide variety of forage that the bass will feed on. The paddle tail has such a unique action that the bass just cannot resist. The paddle tail looks so natural moving throughout the water column and it can trick even the most hesitant of bass to bite your lure. In this video I will talk about five common mistakes that I see many anglers make whenever they are fishing a paddle tail. Avoiding these five common mistakes will help you be much more efficient with the paddle tail and you will catch a lot more bass whenever you are out on the water. The paddle tail swim bait will work in many conditions throughout the whole entire country and you will catch some huge bass using this lure. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with my five common mistakes that I see many anglers making whenever they're fishing a paddle tail. Also if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing. We are on the way to 5k by the end of the year and I know it's getting close but I definitely feel like we can do it. We just need a couple good videos to take off. So if you're not subscribed already make sure you hit that button down below. At the time of recording this we are at 3.1k and I just wanted to say I really do appreciate all the support and the channel's just growing so quickly. I have also decided to launch the membership feature for my channel so if you're interested in supporting the channel like that too, make sure you check it out. The first common mistake that I see many anglers making whenever they're fishing the paddle tail is not matching the hatch with wherever they're fishing. Whenever fishing the paddle tail, it is absolutely crucial that you match the hatch with wherever you're fishing just so you can get more bites. To understand what forage you should imitate, it is important to understand what the bass are feeding on in the body of water that you are fishing. One of the best ways to do this is by seeing what the bass are feeding on and to use visual clues to determine what the bass are feeding on for that specific day. For example, let's say that you see bass blowing up on bait balls. You would want to imitate a shad pattern, especially if there's a good healthy population of shad in the lake. Or if you're in the Carolinas, you might want to imitate a blueback herring pattern just because of how prevalent they are down here. Or if you're somewhere where shad or blueback herring are not present, a bluegill or a perch imitation would not be a bad choice. However, like I said, it is very crucial to know what exactly the forages is in the body of water that you are fishing. And this is what you should be imitating whenever you are fishing a paddle tail. Another thing that you should consider whenever you are trying to match the hatch is the size of the bait fish that the bass are feeding on. For example, let's say that the bass are feeding on shad in the fall. Generally, shad will be anywhere from three to four inches this time of year. So using a shad imitation pattern that is between three to four inches would get you a lot more bites whenever you're out on the water. However, it really depends on whenever you are fishing during the year and what type of bait fish are present in the body of water that you are fishing. If you catch a bass and it spits up some bait fish, you should try to imitate the bait fish as best as possible with the color and the size selection. You will get so many more bites doing this and you will have a lot more success using the paddle tail throughout the whole entire year. The second mistake that I see many anglers making whenever fishing the paddle tail is not using the right jig head for the right situation. Whenever fishing the paddle tail, it is crucial to consider the weight of the jig head that you are fishing with so you can reach the desired depth for the bass and where they're staging at. Whenever I am throwing a paddle tail, I normally like to fish it near the top of the water column and I will normally use an eighth ounce jig head most of the time. However, if I want to fish it deeper in the water column, I would use a heavier jig head so it can get to the desired depth much quicker. It is important to remember that using a lighter jig head will make it look more realistic whenever it's moving throughout the water. However, it really depends on the situation that you are fishing in and where the bass are located at. Another thing to consider whenever you're fishing the paddle tail is how versatile it can be and how many different ways that you can rig it. Most of the time whenever I'm fishing a paddle tail, I like to fish it on a jig head, but you can Texas rig it, put it on the back of a spinner bait, or put it on the back of a swim jig. There's many different ways to utilize the paddle tail even besides the ones I just mentioned. The paddle tail is very versatile and should be a very important tool in your tackle box. Make sure whenever you're out on the water that you experiment with many different presentations and different weights to determine what exactly will work on the body of water that you are fishing. The third mistake that I see many anglers make whenever fishing a paddle tail is not changing up the retrieve. Many anglers will just do a steady retrieve 
even bring it back to them, but there is so many different ways that you can fish the paddle tail. One of my favorite ways to fish the paddle tail is by suddenly killing the action. This will trigger a predatory response from the bass and you will catch some nice fish doing this. I was on Lake Chickamauga for the very first time and I utilized this technique to get the bass to bite that day. It works very well and I have used it in countless other situations and it is one of the best ways that you can trigger a predatory response from the bass. The bass cannot resist the retrieve and you will catch so many more bass by doing this. Another good retrieve to mention is popping the paddle tail across the bottom. This works extremely well especially whenever the bass are hugging the bottom and you will catch some nice bass doing this. Bass will come up and inspect your lure and they are very curious by nature. And whenever it's bouncing across the bottom the bass just cannot resist it and they have to hit it. Another thing to consider whenever you're trying to trigger a reaction strike out of the bass is how fast or slow you are retrieving the paddle tail. Sometimes burning the paddle tail back to you will trigger some very aggressive strikes and other times using a slower retrieve can get you more bites. It really depends on what time of year you're fishing and what the mood of the bass are. It is important to experiment and see what will work well for you in the situation that you're fishing in. Let me know in the comments section down below what your favorite retrieve is whenever you're fishing the paddle tail. The fourth mistake that I see many anglers make whenever they're fishing the paddle tail is not using a paddle tail with a lot of action. It is very crucial for your paddle tail to have good action moving throughout the water column because this is what will get the bass to bite it. I fish the paddle tail in clear water conditions most of the time except whenever I am fishing it as a trailer on the back of a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. So how the swim bait looks when retrieved is very important. This will make a huge difference whenever you're fishing the paddle tail and you will get a lot more bites by doing this. My favorite paddle tail to use is the Kitex Swing Impact Fact because of how realistic it looks whenever it's retrieved. It looks so lifelike moving throughout the water column and will trigger a lot more reaction strikes out of the bass. I would like to add that they tear pretty easy but they sure do catch some bass. There's many different types of brands that you can use so it is important to experiment to see what works best for you. However, over the years I've really come to depend on Kitek just because of its lifelike action and it can trick even the most pressured bass. I've caught so many nice fish using a Kitek on a jig head and is a staple in my tackle box all year round due to its lifelike action moving throughout the water column. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite paddle tail brand is to use. The fifth mistake that I see many anglers make when fishing a paddle tail is not fishing it in the right areas. The paddle tail truly shines whenever the bass are keyed in on bait fish and it helps you stand out from the rest of the school. Whenever bass are chasing schooling bait fish, there is truly no other better lure to throw than a paddle tail to trigger a reaction strike out of the feeding bass. However, the paddle tail does not have to imitate schooling bait fish all the time and can imitate a wide variety of forages that the bass will feed on throughout the year. For example, you can imitate bluegill and you can fish it in areas that bluegill will be at. Whenever I was on Lake Chickamauga in the early fall, I was throwing the paddle tail swim bait up under the docks and I was able to catch my limit doing this. This is because I knew that the forage were relating to the docks and I was able to watch them blow up on the forage and I was able to figure out a pattern to it. One of the most important things that you can do when fishing a paddle tail is paying attention to where the forage and the bass are relating to for that day. I will throw the paddle tail around many different types of cover depending on how I rig it and it's truly effective in many different situations. I will throw it around wood, rocks, and many different types of vegetation. I will also target points, ledges, and humps. I will fish the paddle tail swim bait in shallow conditions too, but it really depends on what I see throughout the day and what I see on my fish finder. Make sure whenever you're out on the water throwing a paddle tail that you pay attention to where the bass are relating to and where the forage is relating to for that day. You will become much more efficient using a paddle tail by doing this. These are the top five mistakes that I see many anglers make whenever they are fishing a paddle tail. By not making these mistakes, 
takes, you will increase the quality and the quantity of the bass you catch whenever you're fishing a paddle tail swim bait. Let me know if the video helped you in the comments section down below. Also, let me know if you have confidence throwing a paddle tail and what your favorite way to rig it is down in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button down below so more people can get recommended this video. If you are not subscribed, I'd love to have you join the channel. We are on the way to 5k subs by the end of the year and I really feel like we can do it. And I would love to have you join the community. If you want to check out another proven fish catcher this time of year, make sure you check out this video right here.